My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And uh, yes, new board, new setup, echoey, I know, we'll get over that. But any road, let's get on with the video because of, of obviously people have clicked on this video because of what the title is. So I have actually even got um, the graph that I did earlier uh, of all of this. But any road, so this video is entitled um, Pumping Losses and the whole idea that you'll have a crankcase just say something like this with some weird whatever and then you'll have a cylinder head up here like this and you'll have intake here and exhaust port that kind of jobby and the whole idea is is that you have um, your piston up here like so and as your piston let's use a different color why not we've got them as your piston descends uh, on its holy crusade to push you ever faster as the piston descends all this air all this nasty evil air that lives down here has to be pumped out so the displacement of the volume of air is actually equal to your displacement um, for any given stroke basically so let's just say this is a thousand cc and it's a four cylinder so it's a four cylinder, a um, thousand cc, so that's 250 cc per cylinder, um, per, this is both either end. So as you compress, you compress 250 cc, well, you actually a bit more, but any road, you know what I mean, into a smaller volume, whatever your compression, but under here, there is the, the piston will displace the same amount regardless because that's what its displacement means basically the volume that it can create and subtract basically so you've got 250 cc per cylinder so this is per cylinder like so so surely you know when these engines start to really shift and stuff like that it's a small amount of air but it's you know what are the forces involved so i actually uh, measured this by doing the old um, what you call the, the friction uh, the, the drag equation which is um, the CD which is the coefficient of drag which is the relationship between one and the other so uh, form drag so straight on drag versus skin drag so if you have a, uh, a sphere like this how much of this is surface area and how much of this is glancing blows basically that's what it means you can write this in any order and obviously the boardroom has been a twat straight away uh, so it's cd and then you multiply this by your velocity and that's a squared but it's almost making it into an acceleration and then you times this by what we call rho which is like a weird p this is basically just density uh, density and for air at 20 degrees blah 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 depending what your conditions are it's around about 1.224 kilograms per cubic meter it's about that for dryish normal everyday air obviously this is going to change when you go to altitude stuff like that um, and then you times this by the area of your object that you're banging it through and then you get all of this and you half it. So you times this by 0 0.5. Alright, so that's what you do. It's one of these weird equations where you have to get all the units in order. Any road, so you've done all that. And what you can do is you can actually plug in the numbers. So what we're going to do is, um, for our CD, so this is our profile basically. We don't want to fuck around with the profile of a piston. We're just going to imagine... That this is our cylinder that's the bottom of the piston and she's traveling this way down pushing the air out of the way how much of that can you see now oh, you can see enough of it you know what i mean so we're just going to call it a basically a diameter so our cd here because we're not going round we're just slamming a cylinder basically a circle straight into it we'll just call this one we'll just call that one our velocity now our velocity is a bit of a funny fucker because we're accelerating from zero at the top and then zero at the bottom. So I've done a, a curve for the, we're gonna use an R1 in all of this. So these are uh, Y, Z, F, 
our warm figures and uh, put a box around that so we can make that quite clear and uh, this is a 2020 i'm just using them and then the bore was 70 was it 79 so the area is 79 divided by 2 squared times pi pi r squared basically to work out your area we've got to do that in uh, meters so this is all um, this here is in meters uh, your density is in kilograms per cubic meter so that's we've got that sorted out our velocity is in meters per second like so and then our 0.5 and all that jubbly so when i do all that for a uh, for the size of our piston so we're only going to do it for one cylinder for the time being when we do this i've got some notes <laughs> my notes have fallen over this isn't working very well is it come on notes it's just numbers that's all so uh, when you do all this you end up with a graph that looks like this so what we've got there on the graph that i did if i have a look at it on my phone uh if we look at the graph could be all professional about this but it's better when you just do it like this <laughs> it says so basically what we've got across the bottom is we've got zero to 180 degrees so basically top dead center to bottom dead center like so and then we've got I'm just looking at the battery <laughs> and it goes up to 1.8 and this is newtons of force and it just goes basically like that like you'd expect with the highest force being about 75 to 80 degrees of crank rotation because it travels faster on that initial first quarter of the rotation if you get what I mean we've been through this before so this is the fastest part that's exactly basically this just matches our um, velocity squared with our um, you know our force is a function of that the resistance is the faster you go and your end the, the surface area is basically constant the piston doesn't change size it has got cavities and recesses but we're only doing averages here so your piston's going down like that, it's trying to plough that 250cc of air out of the way. The fact of the matter is, is the stroke is only 50 millimetres, so it's only 5 centimetres. So the stroke is bloody tiny. It's not much of a stroke, it's not much air. It's 250cc's worth of air, basically. <laughs> exactly. Um, not exactly, it's 2, 4, 8 point something. Regardless, you get this. And if you look at this, this is only 1.8 newtons. However, you have to be careful because that 1.8 newtons is the peak. Right? We don't want the peak. We want the entire. Because we're talking about power here. So we want basically the area under the curve. So what we do is we want all of this. And if you work out the area under the curve, all what you can do is you can work out every single point on that and just add it all together, basically. Um is well yeah you can so once we've got the so what we're looking for is the area under the curve and when you look at the area under the curve and we work out all of this it is get a good pen a hundred and fifty what's that point two eight zero nine six one newtons which in layman's terms is fuck all. Now, we have two downstrokes. We have the intake stroke and we have the power stroke. And you might think to yourself, well, the power stroke has been pushed down by the expanding gases, blah, 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 blah. Yes, but there's still this resistive, the air doesn't disappear on the power stroke, even though it's against it, it is a subtractive force. So basically you just times this by two. It's a subtractive force. So basically we, we just call it 300. Point four. Let's just call it 300.4 or 300.5 actually, fuck it, let's call it 300.5 because that's rounding up nicely. So 300.5 newtons um, per four cycles. Now there's four cylinders and you might go, oh well there's four cylinders, you've got to times that by four, so you're getting up to one point, you know, you're getting to 1.2, this is 1.2 kilonewtons, this is getting quite big. However, we only have to work it out for the four cycles, right? 
and for each individual cylinder basically what we want to look at is a percentage so the next thing you do is you look at you do the same kind of calculation like this and this is the other graph and this is the amount of force um, in newtons applied by combustion and that force <laughs> obviously massively wins i actually should do these in the right colors right so blue there so what's that force? If we scrub out all of this nonsense, we've got the air resistance force here, which we'll call, so we've got, maybe I should do it this side, air resistance, or just call it drag, that's acting against the piston coming down, and that's 300, let's just call it 300 newtons. And this is subtracted, this is working against what we want it to do. You still see me here, we can still see you, aren't you fucking moron? And then, let's use the black. Um, so then we've got the drag, so that's all this stuff in here, resisting us like that. We've got the drag, force there resisting us and then if you put the pressure curve in and all that rubbish on the way down we get so the combustion force combustion force that pushes the piston down which is positive in a sense because that's where we want to go is one three eight eight seven six 6.64 newtons. Oh, hang about. That's a fucking big number, isn't it? <laughs> 1.3 million newtons. Right? That's like what happens when you add all of that up. Now, you might think of that and go, fucking hell. We've got 0 0.3 kilonewtons. Right? And then this one is what there it's one point uh, no, 1388 kilonewtons you might say fuck you know that's an awful lot of force you know what i mean it's a hundred and uh, one thousand three hundred and eighty eight kilonewtons holy mother of god but that's the whole point is it's just that bang that initial bang and then it's um, exhaust intake compression and that's basically got to see that through and propel you across the earth so it might seem like a big number initially but then when you incorporate it into everything yes you've got another cylinder firing another cylinder firing it's you know it's an awful lot of force any road so once we've got this worked out it's not point either just get rid of that point 1,388 kilonewtons versus 0 0.3. What is this as a percentage? Well, basically, I wrote it up there. Um, and I've wrote so many bloody things. Yeah, so the percentage is 0 0.02164. Uh, that is what this is of this. It is bugger all. Now, where does this whole, you know, why, why does all this matter? This is the drag on a system on the R1 um, at peak, peak torque, which was 8,000, what was it, 8,790? 8,790 RPM. Because we've got the uh, peak torque and we've, we've got the horsepower, so the horsepower here is 131. We work that out from our numbers. Horsepower. So basically, the air resistance is 0.02164%. And how much is that? Uh, I did work that out. Oh, there we are. It's zero. <laughs> It's 0 0.028 of a horsepower. Oops, bloody fuck that one up. So yeah, that's what it means in real money. The air resistance 
of a Yamaha one of each piston, because we're working out in percentages now, and because it's one after the other, we can just work it out as a percentage. So it's a percentage, you, you don't have to multiply this by four, it's on each stroke. There's no reference to time here. This is the RPM time thing here. And because we've just done it per rev, because it's just the downstroke, not the up, uh, even, we've even doubled it up basically, so we're making it even, there's other things to consider like, um, as one piston comes down, it depends which way the air is going, all this kind of rubbish, depends how well it pumps, what restrictions there are in the cases, stuff like that. But basically what we're saying is, from this number here, the air resistance equals 0 0.028 of that horsepower. It is fucking nothing. It is nothing. Now, if you are going to get some of that horsepower back, let's just say you reduce your crankcase pressure, instead of this being just, say, 14.7 PSI, like a... Um, you know, just at, about atmospheric, something like that, you know, 15 PSI. Let's say we reduce this to seven. So we're basically, it's like half a vacuum if there is such a thing. You'd still, you'd, be, you'd get back that much horsepower. That's what you'd get back. If you made it a pure vacuum, which you couldn't do, if you made it a pure vacuum, you'd get back 0 0.028 horsepower. The fuck is that? <laughs> that is literally nothing. That is literally absolutely nothing. He's just fuck all. Um, so, taking their numbers, how much, if you had this setup, this exact setup, how much horsepower would this engine need to make to make the pumping losses one horsepower? And I worked that out, <laughs> it'd have to be an R1 engine that made 4,656 horsepower Right, for the pumping loss, pumping loss due to air uh, under the piston, to equal one horsepower. So you hear all these things, it's just complete bollocks. Now people do say stuff like, um, yeah, but there's air mist and there's water, uh, there's basically an oil mist inside there. Damn right, that has a lot of mass. When you hit that, it's gonna slow you down a bit. Blah, 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 blah. The thing is, someone sent me a picture of an R1 where they wanted to, and this is why I use this, where they wanted to reduce the pumping losses of this. And what do they do? They have an oil pump, and they have another oil pump just to have a dry sump system. And it's like, that's a real pumping loss. We can measure what that pumping loss is of churning oil around. No, that is, these pumps are designed to churn, uh, pump oil. They're not designed to pump air. It's not even a sealed system. It, there's a return, just, yeah, just, just madness. So you might hear all these things. They put it on a dyno and it seemed to perform a bit better. With the V8s, with their shit engine architecture to start with anyway, because they're old school engines, um, that's why they have windage trays, stuff like that, to try and stop the churning and all that kind of rubbish about. The other thing is, well, is you can only go so far to stop it before your uh, main bearings and your journal bearings at your crank are just pissing oil out radially. You know what I mean? They're just pissing oil out radially. And it's that that's the biggest problem, not the fucking air that your piston's trying to push out of the way. We'll do a bit more about this, but like I say, just looking at an engine that already exists today and the power and stuff like that, I'm just using a very basic drag equation. There are a lot of variables and they're not the exact numbers, but they're so close to the real numbers, it's not, even, it's not worth considering. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.